Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. And I'm really excited about today's guest, Tanika D'Souza from DC. And she dubs herself as the 100 Challenge Chick, empowering women to break the 100K income ceiling in their businesses as entrepreneurs, self-employed and business owners. And I'm really excited to give her voice a platform and talk about entrepreneurship and the work that she's doing. So Tanika, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know uh, your husband was on my podcast as well, you know, so, social media. And so tell me more, you know, tell the audience about, you know, your work, how you got started and we'll go from there. So I guess similar to you, um, a lot of us choose career paths, right? And then it's like, you get there and you're like, yay, I'm here. And then you realize this is not going to give me the income that I want, right? So what I learned about you is that you're helping physicians because you would think like if you were a doctor, you clearly are going to like be so rich, right? Well, we're little kids. We think all the doctors are like very wealthy. Um, but a lot of times what we don't factor in is what it takes to like build wealth and to like understand how to manage our finances. And I do that through entrepreneur. So I do um, coach others in the things that I've learned as an entrepreneur, but my biggest entrepreneurial venture right now is I own a staffing agency. So not only am I helping you like understand how to build your business, but I'm also helping you build the team that's going to give you your time back. Right. Because um, what I was reading about you and how you help people is what if you achieve the financial freedom, but then you can't enjoy it? Like, how much would that suck? Right. Because you're making the money, but you're like stuck in that business. So I want to like take a two prong approach where you're learning to build a business for yourself, but you're also learning how to build it in such a way that you have the time to enjoy the rest of your life. Fascinating. So what, you know, what you're describing is, you know, building financial freedom, but also time freedom, which yes. a lot of people don't understand. They're all about the finances and they, then they get burned out. And once they make the shift from, you know, solopreneur to business owner, entrepreneur, investors, that's when the real passive income comes. That's when they free up their time. They can do other things. Yeah. I love that. You know, uh, what's interesting is, you know, um, you know, I actually haven't had any guests on the show talk about staffing because, you know, I'm talking to my other fellow entrepreneurs and they say it's really high, hard to hire good people because, you know, the bad ones, they get, they don't make it or they'll, you know, leave or quit or get fired. And then yeah. the good ones, they, 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 they're doing their own thing. So, you know, talk about this idea where people have trouble with staffing these days. You kind of hit the, the main point problem on the head is when we start our business, a lot of times, or I'm talking to entrepreneurs, but I think physicians are the same, right? You feel that you want to control your time, right? So you want to just do the things that you want to do, invest in the things that you care about, but then you realize there's only so much I can do by myself. You'll run into a lot of chaos with uh, building your business. You'll start to have a lot of challenges. You can't grow beyond a certain point because you've reached the number of clients and um, you, you know patients that you can have. So a team is vitally important if you really want to scale. Uh, but I think most people can't, they have a hard time making that initial jump from solopreneur to staff one, because they really don't want to give up their time freedom. They feel like this person's going to weigh me down. They're going to cost a lot of money, but they're not thinking about what this person is going to offer as far as growth for their company. Yeah. And it's, so, quite, yeah, I love that. I love this idea because, you know, it's actually a really big problem. And, um, you know, recently I've, I've actually turned to software solutions like scheduling and, you know, virtual assistants. I don't, because they're not very, you know, quite honestly, there's, there's software that can do that. And now there's chat GPT, you know, editors, uh, you know, I, I don't need that anymore. So I can use software to do all of that. So um, it's, it's quite interesting, you know, especially with staff and then you no know, software. Um, so tell, you know, kind of, you know, people, business owners, 
what are some of the essential you know key components of staff what to look for can they let use software uh tell us more so i specialize in virtual offshore staff right that is something that you know in the us and canada people are really very interested in and but then they don't know how to do it right so it's like oh i heard if i hire you know outside of this country or this continent is so much cheaper and that is true but there's so much other management because i'll i'll give you a funny story um my husband and i hire a lot of virtual assistants they definitely come from all over the globe my son at the time was about 16 and so he's hearing us like have meetings with our virtual staff and so he just decided that he was going to hire virtual staff for his own company so he's a kid right but a lot of people make these same kind of kid mistakes where he literally just went on the platform he interviewed a few people he found someone that he felt like he could communicate with and he hired and so I just happened to like go near my son and he was like, oh, I'm in a meeting. And I'm thinking, who is he in a meeting with? But then he came out and he's like, oh, yeah, I hired my first staff. So he was so proud of himself. And I asked the basic question, how are you going to pay them? He had no idea. It, it's not the same as in the U.S. or if you're in the same country, they don't take W-2s the same way that we do. You know, like, how are you doing the currency conversions? There's just so many basic things, right? So I think people initially feel like, oh, it's cheaper, but then they immediately know that I don't know what I'm doing here. So that's where I come into play, um, not just to like help you do payroll, which is something I definitely take off your plate. But I think where a lot of people have hangups, and I think this is what you were really getting at, is you have to hire for fit. So I spend a lot of time in the assessment process of understanding, like, who is Dr. Lou? What do you stand for? What do you value? How do you like to work with people? Because I can learn everything about the skill you want, but if I don't give you the person that aligns with your values and the things that are important to you, it doesn't matter that they can do the job. You're not going to get along with that person. They're not going to fit into your company. So I think more importantly is understanding who you are as a company, what you stand for, what you value, and finding people that fit in, into that value system. Mm, yeah, I love that. And uh, so you talk about hiring for fit, you know, there's a great book, um, you know, Good to Great, it's talking about who, uh, you know, hire yes, who. Put them on the right bus. The right bus. Put and the then, right people on the bus. And, um, you know, slow to hire, quick to fire. Yes. Um, what other like also especially with skills you know talk about for example like basically routine automated repetitive versus like higher order like decision making uh judgment creativity how what is the what are the distinctions there so typically when someone comes to me they say i need staff <laughs> and they don't have a clue what position or kind of role they even need to fill. So we are assessing all the things you said, like what are the tasks that they need to do? Is this like a routine thing? Do you need somebody who's going to think with you? Do you need somebody who's going to like, you know, create with you? What is it that you're actually looking for? Um, so what I do typically is assess the job that they're going to do. So a lot of times if someone is brand new and they're just like, ah, I have so much going on and they're just in this crazy panic state, I have them take a pause. And when they're doing tasks that someone else can do, just write that down. And I have them do that for about a week. Um, and then we talk again, because if you're just in that chaos, you can't see very clearly what you need. Typically, when they come back to me, what they need falls into three major categories. And so I usually start companies, especially solo entrepreneurs, in these three areas. So one is an executive assistant. That person is going to help you 
if you have a lot of tasks on your plate, so let's say your email is just crazy, you're constantly getting calls, you need to, you know, like Dr. Lou, he's talking to all these people, you need to keep that organized. You got podcasts to be released, edit, publish, all these things, but they're all on your plate. Probably an executive assistant is good for you. The next kind of level up is a project coordinator. In truth, Adding on your podcast probably means you should step up to a project coordinator because you could think of each podcast as a project. So to get out episode one, you need to, you know, book the guests, record, you need to edit, you need to publish, you need to promote this uh, podcast. So all of those things a project coordinator can help you do. And then a third level is when you have a team. So I did say solopreneurs, but some solopreneurs have contractors that they work with or other businesses that they're coordinating with. So if you have to deal with multiple people and multiple projects, you need that higher level thinking organization that comes with a project manager. So I typically will start someone in one of those three categories, because once they get that Once they get their business under control, they can think more clearly about how they want to really um, build out their team. But usually one of those three people will be your first hire uh, when you come to me. Fascinating. And I know, uh, you know, we're coming kind of towards the end of it. But, um, you know, talk about, you know, your staffing agency, what you do, how can people reach you and some of the um, you know, do you offer placement or, you know, do business owners come to you and say, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z, um, you know, tell us more. Um, so my company is called High Octane Teams. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Tanika D'Souza there and also High Octane Teams does have a business page. We haven't built that up quite yet. And you can also find us on the web. But when you reach out to me, I'm very used to, because I do business development and other business coaching, I'm very used to hearing like all the things that someone wants to explode and say like is going on. So you don't have to come to me very prepared or scripted with what's going on. I have a very thorough assessment process that gets to the heart of what you're dealing with. And then we move forward into what position will um, fill that. But I do spend a lot of time with you really understanding who you are and what you value so that I can bring that, that perfect fit onto your team. Um, once we understand what you need, then I find that person. Screening when you're dealing with offshore virtual assistants is not an easy task. So I have a team that goes out and finds the right candidates. Um, And because we're primarily looking for those three types of people, I'm just constantly looking for them um, so that when you come, I'm like, oh, yes, we did meet a young lady who fits that. And then I introduce you to the candidates. Once you make a choice, then we don't leave. We stay and we're helping you manage um, that person because what's obvious with offshore virtual assistance is cultural difference. But in truth, these are things that people should do anyway. They just don't. But they will do it because they understand there's cultural difference. So we make sure that you're paying attention to your meeting schedule and how things are getting delivered and how you communicate. You'll be surprised at how many managers or executives, literally, they don't have like, this is where I communicate. It's like, I sometimes email, I sometimes this, and it's like, the person can't keep up. So I help you streamline your system of working with your virtual assistant. I also do a lot of training of your virtual assistant. So if you tell me the software that you use or things that um, they need to know, they come to you knowing at least the basics and introduction um, to those tools. And then you can train them further on how you use the tool. Um, And then I also support them with community. So all the virtual assistants that we work with, they create a community together where if you say I'm doing this certain type of project, they can go to their team and um, ask for assistance. So that's what we do. It's it takes a lot off your plate as far as having a staff person. And this is what we do professionally. So we understand how to build a team and how to 
and how to match for fit. Mm, interesting. And is yours uh is your revenue model is it like a a, a consultation or is it basically like kind of like an Airbnb like a match and then is it like commission? I'm I'm just curious. So they just pay an hourly rate and that covers the entire process. So you would come to me and if depending on the skill set you need we quote you the hourly rate for that person or you you know we try to understand what your budget is for that staff we tend to hire either full time or part time for you and then you just pay that rate to us and we do all the rest of the work in the background oh interesting oh wow okay interesting um and then you mentioned and how can people connect with you you know reach out to you check out your social media etc Sure. Um, I'm on LinkedIn with High Octane Teams, and my name is Tanika D'Souza. So you can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. Um, otherwise, you can go to the site, High Octane Teams, and that will give you a link to literally just book a consultation. Hmm. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, really interesting uh, talking about staffing agency, entrepreneurship, uh, time freedom and uh, the solutions that Tanika has. All of her resources will be in the links and show notes. And thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lou.